Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm at CES 2024 and I'm looking for interesting, fun, and downright quirky companies. This is one of them. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am with uh, Craig Piersma again. We actually talked last year about <laughs> your your rear view displays, camera mounted everything all over the place with Gentex. Yep. And we want to talk about some new stuff that you've come up with since last year and see what the new technology is. So thanks yeah, for being here. Yeah, sure. I'm just getting us back in our mode here. So yeah, cool. so we're sitting inside our demonstrator vehicle. A lot of the tech that's in here, we developed our, ourselves and put it on this vehicle. Camera monitoring system, if you look at the cameras, this is the kind of thing you don't see too many of, but the outside right. mirrors are gone. There's a camera, there's a little blade on the outside that is a camera. You right. can see that. I'll roll that guy down. And then the displays right are on uh, the, <laughs> connected to the A-pillars there, that little curved OLED display. We call that a camera monitoring system. So there's theory that one day exterior mirrors kind of go away. We're just saying, hey, we're ready. Can't come soon Should enough. Should the man. automaker want to do that? <laughs> but you also note that we have here, this is called our full display mirror. So right. that is... I love that we're getting the demo of people staring yeah, at it too. <laughs> looking at it. They're looking at the, uh, the different uh, imagers that are in the back. Right. But that's a bright, clear panoramic display of what's behind the vehicle. Right. So one of the things we're showing that's a little new this year is we're working with a company called Atasky. Okay. And Atasky does thermal imaging. Excellent. Uh, forward and rearward facing applications. So what we're doing is adding a thermal imager rearward of the vehicle so the driver could switch between the standard CMOS imager, the standard right, camera, right. or a thermal imager, or a blended image of those two oh, cameras together. Oh, that's super cool. And what that allows you to do is identify potential hazards, you know, bicyclists, pedestrians, even vehicles that might be obscured by bright light or headlight glare or right, sunlight right. glare or fog adverse weather conditions. Wait, I'm here with Koi T and you uh, you have a new product you said launched four days ago. Yes, sir. Audio Q. This is pretty genius. Thank so, you. All right, so tell us first of all, what is the problem we're trying to solve? What is that pain point? Absolutely, so yeah. the, the problem we are trying to solve is we all know when you set up an audio home system, you have a bunch of wires, you have to find electricians, you have to hit up Geek Squad or Best Buy. Right. Either that or else you got cables running all across exactly. your living room. Exactly, it looks so, yeah. like a rat's nest. Yeah. Now our solution to that problem is we made a main transmitter. That's our receiver. Right. But we made a main transmitter that sits Well, let's walk there. over there and take yeah, a look absolutely. at it while we're talking about it, yeah. So here we have, so regular TV, no, you don't have to do anything with the TV. Well, you can show them. Yep, so on the back end of things, I mean, look how simple this is. This yeah, is great. So you just have, you have your via HMI yep. power cable plugged right. in, done. That's now it. once, <laughs> yes sir, once that's plugged in, you go to each individual speaker, you put your receiver on there, right. plug it in, and once everything's plugged in, everything combines and pairs instantaneously. Okay. And the real genius is what? How do we get rid of all those cables? Absolutely. So <laughs> the really cool thing is there's no Wi-Fi, there's no Bluetooth whatsoever. And if you look right here, it's all ran through just a power cable. Right. That's it. So you could be anywhere in your house, anywhere in your home. You have speakers set up all around. You plug it in. You're ready to go. You're ready to boom and bang. Right. So and Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm with Natalie from Garmin, and Hi. we're gonna talk about all, I don't even know, 100 watches, something like, you have a lot of watches that we can look at. So. Yeah, there's yeah, a I'm lot excited. to show. So we can start here with our running watches. So we have our Forerunner series, which is built for runners, as the name okay. would suggest. <laughs> um, so we kind of have our entry level, um, maybe someone just starting um, their running journey. They wanna get used to wearing a running watch and what those, um, what that data will tell them. So we have right. our 455 here. A step up, we introduced these last April, our Forerunner 265 and 265S. Um, so that's a little bit of a smaller size, but that has that bright, beautiful AMOLED display. Right. And then the step up here is our Forerunner 965, um, which adds in built-in um, topographic mapping. So when oh, you're cool. out on a run, it'll it'll help you route your way and navigate right. Um, right. to a course or a trail or back home. Excellent. These okay. are some of the other um, sort of outdoor wearables. Um, our Phoenix 7 Pro is um, one of our most popular. It's kind of our flagship 
multi-sport outdoor smartwatch. Right. Um, has built-in flashlight, which is really cool and something we've integrated into our other um, outdoor products. Um, and then I'm going to take you around. And some the, solar powered. Uh, and some solar as well. powered, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Phoenix Seven um, has a solar charging lens. So when you're outdoors, you will get extended battery life. Um, right. Right. While you're enjoying your passions outside. There you go. Oh, and these are pretty interesting. So traditional analog interface now. Absolutely. So, yeah. so this is our Vivo Move Trend. So very stylish. Cool. It has real um, ticking hands, um, but it also has a hidden display where you'll see all your stats oh, nice. and text messages and, and other notifications that come through. So that's really the best of both worlds. You can wear a traditional, attractive analog watch and and also get all the. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the demo, and I will try to give you a sense of, of how it's going. I guess you can film this, right? Yes. So you can see, yeah, you can sort of see what I'm doing. First one, I do a small calibration. So yes. if you, okay. can you hold your hands like this? Okay. Move your thumb inside, move a little bit around with your thumb like this, then make a fist, stretch your fingers, and give me a thumbs up. I got a buzz out of this one. <laughs> Yes. Oh, they're, no, they're both sides. Yeah, so there was a little buzz to give you a nice little sense that you've gotten it co completed properly. And of course, you guys won't be able to see this on the TV, but I can go, oh, there's my hand. Here. So I can just pick up objects, is that correct? Not really yet, so oh, okay. I'll oh, sorry. center okay. you here sorry. <laughs> gotcha. this part. And okay. now, you see, look up in front of you, you see a very sad plant, right? Yes, oh, that does look it's really sad. It's your task to <laughs> save that plant. Oh, dear. And the first thing you need to do is pick up the flask on the table. Okay. The, the flask. The oh, one sorry, the, the flask, pipe. yes. Got it. Oop, <laughs> see if I can, oh, hey, that was Grab nice. Oh, okay, and now you so can water. pour the water into the bottle on the left. Uh, into this one. Yes, there Woo. you go. There we go. Oh, I see the robot is telling me what to do. <laughs> Don't be a dummy. Oh, that's actually cool because I can feel the, the sensation. Now, what if I let go here? Will that actually drop on the ground? Like, oh, okay, so not too bad. All right, so next up. Push the button on the display. And the best is if you do it with your whole hand. Oh, okay. So it's, is that filling up? Oh, wow, that feels really cool. Yeah, I can definitely feel that as it's working. Awesome. Now you can look up cool. to the turtle. Yes. And you see that you can take one of the crystals from the turtle. You can take a step forward if you like. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm always worried from game playing that we could have a problem. Really pop it okay. off, yes. There we go. And yeah, place it on nice. the table in front of you. Okay. And cool. now take the hammer from the right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, the demo's all set up nicely. It's I can mesh. see that. Okay. Wow. All right. Oh, that was actually fun. I could feel that. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. I'm with Dean, who is the founder, right, yes. of Chef AI. Super excited to talk about a new, um, I don't know, invention, creation. Tell us, I, I you know, yeah. cooking is a pain in the butt, so tell us how it's gonna of make course. it easier. So the idea here is you put in any type of food in, just toss it in, push play, it automatically knows how long to cook the food for, at what temperature and duration. Cool. So it's basically adds convenience to everyday life and allows for the ease and simplicity of cooking. Awesome. So yeah, so tell us what, what was your journey? How did you like go from like, <laughs> what was the thing that made you decide to do this? Of course, so one day I was coming home late from night, tossing some fries, went upstairs, 20 minutes passed, all of a sudden I smell something. Oh no, yeah, yeah, what happened. Happened. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we came downstairs like, there gotta be a better solution. Right. So I called okay. up my best friend from high school, we started the company, and ever since we have a prototype here that we can show. Super, awesome. Um, it uses what like internally, like uh, yeah. some machine learning tricks and things, yeah. There's a couple of things going on. So we kind of did a lot of research and a couple of things that are important for cooking was the size, type, area, thickness, and starting temperature of food. Those are very okay. important aspects. Right, cooking. right, right. So we're like, okay, let's just add it to the existing air fryer. Hence, you can see in the, in the prototype here, we have a camera, IR sensor, okay. weight sensors in each of the legs. Oh, so it can, it's can it got a tear on there, so it knows as soon as there's something in there. Okay. There's something in there. Um, and then takes all this information, adds it to the back end deep learning model. And then these are kind of different models that we have for thermal and how to cook the food for based on the size and those surrounds that it's just right. That's awesome. Yeah. So if you put in some like frozen vegetables, it's gonna be, even though it's the same weight, 
that would be different than a cut of salmon or a cut of steak. It would be able to figure out the difference between yeah. exactly, and even going more specific than that, frozen oh, okay. vegetable versus refrigerated vegetables. Right, figure the difference. Right, in. because it knows the temperature. Too. It knows the temperature. Starting temperature uh, is very big, so that's yeah, you want to add yeah, that little caveat in as well. Awesome. And then what? What sort of? Um, I mean, is the whole thing fire and forget and just don't even worry about it, or basically? Yeah. Okay. That's it. You described okay. it. Another added benefit we like to talk about too is our feedback system. Okay. So basically, maybe you like your salmon different than I like my salmon. Yeah, right? a little crispier on the outside, something like that. I'm a little that, soft so. on the inside. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have a user profile, basically. You can, okay. You can adjust okay. it, basically, saying, "Hey, this is the way I like it." So it's right. very tailored right. to how you. Oh, how that's you that's extra cool. So. Cool. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm with Richard from Enchanted Tools, or Enchanté, je suis Enchanté. Uh, so we have, what is, what is this little guy's name? Miroki. Miroki, okay. And obviously I have a, a background in 3D design and animation. Clearly this robot is designed to have some character and to, exactly. and to really, so what is the story behind Miroki? Hello, Miroki is the first robot from Enchanted Tools. Okay. But we really love the idea of bringing character to life. Yes. So if you go to on our website, you can find see, you can find we have a complete animation movie, one minute, right? That talk about the story around the robot because it's an alien species called oh, the cool. Mirokai, okay. and they have fixed a lot of problems on their planet, so they can come here to, to help us, and they are not make like us in sh flesh and bones, so they right. need a suit. So <laughs> us, we create a suit so they can join us. Oh, that's great. And he also has a sister named yeah. Miroka. Yes, yes, so a sister called Miroka. And, and, oh, hey, what's up? So obviously he, he reacts to you <laughs> and waves to you. That is so cute, man. I love this. And I'm also so the tech. To be here and see oh, that's cool. I didn't know he talked, so there we go. Notice we've got uh, self balancing. Yeah. Uh, three motors down at the bottom that keep exactly, the balancing yes. maintained. Okay. It's a uh, reverse pendulum, so the weight is on the shoulder. It's right. always balancing itself. Right, it's always right. in a, finding its equilibrium. Excellent. Okay. It allows the robot to be really easy to move around, you know? I just need two fingers to move right, it around. Right, right. Okay, because I'm with Yi Yu, who is a co founder of, it's called Inixi. Is that the name of the company? Yes. Cool. And you make, I mean, just like really, really awesome, like vacuum tube based. LED, not LED, sorry, vacuum tube based number. Oh, Nixie generators. tubes. Yes, Nixie tubes, thank you. Yes, that's, I don't know why. Obviously, a Nixie would be the, the obvious reason. So, so yeah, tell us a little bit about these. I am a big like watch and time geek, and there are some Nixie tube uh, watches out there and stuff, but I haven't seen anything like this okay. that's been produced. And the fact that they're very, very cool, even though they're vacuum tube. Uh, vacuum so, Nixie based. tubes is actually a technology like before LED. So, people use it uh, for showing digits. Right. And uh, it kind of disappeared because of LED and other displaying technology. But we just thought it's like super beautiful and um, um, and also, it's uh, very useful in uh, military and space uh, technology yes. area. Yes. And we decided to bring it back. And uh, we spent like uh, three, four years investigating and researching. And finally, we made it. We bring it back and we can even customize it. Like you see different symbols here. Right, right. <laughs> and, and some of the uniqueness of this, of course, is number one, it is vacuum tube based, right? So there's yeah. a vacuum inside here. But if it's you start. neon gas. Oh, it's neon gas, so it's a, a non-reactive gas. That's actually safer because vacuum tubes can break very easily. But so inside, if you can, it's very difficult to see on the camera, but there's sort of one layer for every number. And so you pass current through each of the, you know, if it's the number one, you pass current through the number one and that causes it to illuminate. And, Something yeah. like that. I mean, yeah. it's okay. actually plasma. So okay. technically oh, it's, interesting. Called, it's called uh, glow discharge. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm showing my ignorance here, so yeah, <laughs> you gotta educate me here. But you said that one of the things you did was you made these very power efficient. Oh yeah, that they, it's they, like maximum yeah. one watt for this clock. It's how much, less than one watt? Maximum one watt. Maximum one watt, yeah, so wow. Uh, and, and really nice, and I also like the little sort of blue glow on the bottom too. Oh, it's backlight. That's, yeah, that's very cool. Thank you. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All, I am with Sanchit. We are gonna talk about smart helmets of all varieties here. And your company is Livall, is that how you say it? Yes, it's Livall. Livall, okay, excellent. And uh, so, yeah, so I guess first, why? What, what is the use case for this? What's the pain point with traditional helmets? So I'll give a little bit of background. Like right. Livall is the first smart helmet manufacturing company in the world. 
Okay. We are the only one who put speakers, SOS alert, and lights in one helmet. Right. With the lightest weight, we cover all the models, commuter, e-scooter, and road cyclist, ski, and motorbike helmets too. Right. So what is the fascinating thing about these smart helmets? Like road cyclists, if they're listening to music, they're gonna use earbuds. Right. It got integrated speakers. Mains. So here, let's just like right there, you can right see that. Right here, yep. there. But that and means that your ears are not plugged up with uh, with the because that's what I do when I go road biking. I've got and you're uh, aware of your surroundings. Yes, exactly. As well as you you enjoying your music as well. Exactly. Right. In case you receive an urgent phone call, you can just pick with this remote control, okay. which goes on your handlebar. Right. Another good feature: I'm riding bicycle. Right. Someone hit me. I'm unconscious. This helmet is connected to my phone. It's gonna send an SOS alert to my emergency contact through the wall app with my location. Right. So we have like different range. It got right. like embedded lights. We have a different range like road cycling, mountain bike helmets, right. ski. Ski, yeah, I'm going skiing in a couple <laughs> of weeks, so that's particularly that's interesting. Particular, and it got the similar SOS feature right, as well. Right. And we it looks like a big side, like a big button on the side where you can just push so, it. And, like skiers yeah. wear gloves, so that's right. why like it's quite clever. We put a big button right. on the <laughs> helmet, so there's yeah, no issues exactly. for them. Okay, and they have microphones built in too, right? So you can make it's, calls it's, to it's, each other. If you receive phone call, there's a microphone, there's right. a speaker. Another good thing, if two people using Livol helmets, right, it can convert into walkie-talkie through your app, or if Excellent. it's not through your app, it's 15 meter. Uh, distance requirement. Right, excellent, okay. It can connect with any other Livol helmet if it got uh, speaker capabilities. Excellent, okay. wow. That's hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. I'm with Vadim, who is with uh, Bunafer, is that correct? Yes. Uh, so you roast coffee. I know this is not the regular thing I do on my channel, but I absolutely love roasting coffee and I have for years. And I want you to, so you've got your own coffee roaster. Yes. And yes, it's magical, it's really good. Yeah, so yeah, explain what you got here. Yeah, so we started from uh, selling green coffee and uh, we found out that there is no good machine on the market today. So it's either like uh, produce too much smoke and inconsistent result or too expensive and still produce a lot of smoke. Right. So right. we wanted to make more people uh, enjoy the flavor of freshly roasted coffee. So we designed this machine. It was really hard work, um, hardware, firmware, uh, cloud, application development, but we uh, now let yeah, you... Okay. Oops, sorry, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> there we go. Order our coffee, scan the barcode with the application and uh, just pick the roast level and the coffee will be uh, roasted perfectly without any smoke. You just put the green oh, beans here. So you don't have to figure it out yourself. Yes. You just Okay, so you're full service. You have the green beans yes. and you pick whichever one you want, scan it and it so it just transmits. So the app actually communicates with the coffee roaster. Yeah, not oh, just like great. that. We also okay. uh, quiz you and ask you about your tasting preferences. Right. And right. Uh, advise you which coffee will work best for your brewing method, for your uh, tasting preferences. And uh, we help you to pick the roasting level for this machine because the same coffee roasted to different levels will taste completely different. Right. And uh, this is good for espresso, but this you may use for your drip or pour over, right? So. Uh, a lot of details that we taken care of, right. but if okay. you like really coffee geek, you can uh, play with profiles yourself. You can bring some uh, other green coffees, right. and you can uh, create your own profiles and share them with friends. Fantastic! So yeah, so we uh, we create indoor hydroponic gardens. Uh, it's a great way to be able to grow plants year round. Um, we're out of Chicago, so we get a very limited growing season, so it's very hard to get plants to fruit in that time period. Uh, so what we've done is we've been able to create a system that allows you to grow year-round. It also uses about 90 to 95% less water than traditional outdoor gardening, right. which is a That's really nice, too. sustainable feature. Yeah. So yes, we get a lot of people who like it who are more in, um, in limited uh, climates for water restrictions. Right. Um, parts of California and, and other areas in the Colorado River. Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Like Las Vegas, yes, yeah. exactly. So anywhere near that, uh, that water intake has been really beneficial uh, to okay. see this type of product. Uh, so as you can see here, this is our um, 
a model that won our 2023 award uh, last year. <laughs> Gently shoving Pardon him out me, of the way. <laughs> um, so yes. as you can see, this is- So this the, won last year's award. One this was, this so, was yeah. last year's 2023. Well, I'm just making a note of that because we're, we're gonna talk Thank in a minute. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as you can see here, the, the plants grow directly in Very water. Very healthy root system, obviously. Exactly, so, yeah. so this lettuce has been growing for a little over a month. Okay. And then we have our dry nutrient mix. Okay. This is a micro and macro combination of nutrients, so it's designed to optimize the plant growth. Cool. We have two types, sprouts designed for early stages and leafy greens, okay. blossoms for the flowering and fruiting stage, so your tomatoes and peppers will switch to that at a certain point. Our app does a great job of telling you when to make that transition, gotcha. which is also yes, another Yes, let's not forget about feature. that. This is not just yes. the hardware, but it's also the software. Exactly, so that's yeah. a really nice feature. So a lot of people who are new to gardening really enjoy using the app. It educates them, teaches them about the pH balance. Plants like it slightly acidic, so that's a really nice feature too, is we have our pH balance, which you can see here. Uh, that, that is our, um, our size that comes as the starter pack with the garden. Right, um, right. So that is really great. We give you everything you need to get started, a starter pack of 16 seeds pH balance and liquid nutrients to get you going. Um, as you can see here, we then have our water reservoir. This nice. holds nine gallons, so it's quite large. That'll give you at least a week uh, before you have to add more water and more nutrients. Right. We do recommend doing it weekly just because you want yeah. to get the nutrients into the water. And will the app like kind of give you a gentle reminder if you're an idiot and you forgot? It, it does. <laughs> uh, that happens to me all the time. It will it'll kindly remind me with the notification that I need to add water and nutrients. Right. Okay. If you check in the app too, it'll give you other items that you need to do. Any right. chores you have like right. pruning, pollinating, and, and harvesting. And the app, you just tell it like I'm doing leafy greens on this on this. You literally level. are able to pick the yeah. exact plant, which I can show oh, cool. you if you yeah. Give me one second here. Show me the interface. So yeah, so and this let's is- talk, In a minute, let's talk about planting too, because that's Yeah, so I'll walk you through that process, which actually I can kind of do while using the app. Oh, well, so there we go, so yeah. We have our, this is my garden at home. This is the three yeah. levels, you can oh, see. Oh, look at this, we're getting a live view, man. We are, <laughs> so you can see what I'm actually growing right now. I can right. see it's at the third level for water. I can actually control the light with this button, so I actually just turned oh, it cool. off in my house. Okay. I'm turning it back to halfway, back all the way. Super. And then I can click on it here. It'll then bring me to my nursery. So I have three different nurseries growing. Uh, they have a variety of leafy greens, some fruiting plants, and right. some lettuces here. And it'll here. do something as large as an eggplant. It will. So, yeah. It will. It is a patio variety. Right. Um, our Roma, though, which I'll get to in a minute, can do right. full-size eggplants. Okay. And then when you're adding plants, you basically go into a nursery, click the plus button, and it'll give you all 80-plus varieties of plants we have. Awesome. So I basically will click, uh, we'll do patio pride peas. So I'll add that to the nursery so it'll know that I just planted that here and gotcha. add it in. I then get to go into my garden, which is the trays. It is broken up by trays. You can see there's right, one, right. two, and three. So it's showing I've got some basil growing oh, on my nice. top level, um, all different plants over here in my bottom level, more basil. Um, and <laughs> I can sorry, tell you're and a big fan of the level, basil. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm doing a lot of pasta sauces lately. There you go. <laughs> and then on my third level, I have some peppers and some peas. Uh, so I can literally click on the plant and it'll tell me exactly what stage it's at. So it's been growing for 124 days. Okay. That does include the time frame that it's in the nursery. Right. It'll give me each stage of growth as well. And then in addition to that, at the top, we have some uses and recipes, as well as the vitamins and minerals included yeah, in that, that plant. That's cool. So, so all the health benefits you're you You're like, know. what am I going to do with these now? And you're like, they're ripe. And exactly. it's like, hey, there's some recipes here. Probably so. start with our latest invention yes. on what we call a zero tangling floating brush. So right. compare it with a conventional one right. here. So basically a conventional one is attached to the robot in two ends. So both ends are fixed. But for ours, only one end is fixed to a robot. So what it actually do is there's a free end in here and you can see the structure of this right. brush. And it here. tapers obviously towards yeah, that so end. Yeah, so the fixed end is larger in shape and the right. free end is actually smaller. So it actually generates like faster airflow in, in the free end and the airflow actually helps to drag all the hair right, from okay. the fixed end to the free end. Right. And after it drags to here, it actually goes into this air duct. Right oh, in, nice. Right and here. So that's right along with all the rest of the dust. In yes, the house. and it yes. goes okay. into the, the right. dust bag we designed. And of course, here. I have I have two dogs and I have a wife who has very long hair. So yeah. I'm always cutting the, uh, the, the hair out of my vacuum cleaner. So I think <laughs> what we will do is we show a quick demo on okay. your problem right now. Yeah, exactly. so, I love that you got a demo for us. So and right now we're just talking about the vacuuming stuff. Obviously there's mopping too, but we'll get yeah, to that in a minute. Also show. very quiet. Very yes, quiet. Exactly. Yes. So basically these are just normal pet hair. Right. I will do the quick demonstration on oh, pet hair first. That. that is cool. So this will help you out of your the, the dog shed. Exactly, here, right? right. 
Look at that. That is amazing. Oh, and here yeah. we have some long hair. Just in case. Yeah. We're going to torture test this thing. Yeah, as you can probably see, these are pretty long hair right here. Yeah, absolutely. That's the exact kind of thing that's just going to... Look at... Wow, do that again. That was really impressive. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> as you can see, long hair again right. coming in. Five, four. Oh, eight. man. Oh, man. I can't tell you the number of hours I've spent just like cutting all the hair out of the brushes. Yeah. So that's genius. Wow.